A very warm welcome, everyone. My name is Nicholas Tan from Kananga Futures, Sunan Bahad. Thank you for spending your precious time to join our webinar today. It's a joint collaboration with CME Group in our effort to create awareness and provide education on listed directives to all the participants here. We have returned with our nationwide campaign, Into the Futures, stand a chance to win prizes worth up to 30,000 ringgit when you trade Malaysia, US and Hong Kong futures contract from 1st August 2020 until 31st October 2020. Please take note that futures and options trading involves substantial risk in due to leverage factor and may not be suitable for all investors. This webinar is purely for educational purposes. Kananga Futures Union Bahad accepts no liability whatsoever for any direct or consequential loss arising from any use of the content of this webinar. So before we start, we'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to Kananga Futures next webinar, which is on 13 October. It's about assessing the fundamental of soybean complex. An invitation email will be sent to you shortly. Don't miss out. Please remember to register once you receive the email. So next, we have. Uh, if you have any questions for our speaker tonight, please feel free to post your questions through the Q&A box on the right side or bottom of your screen, and he will attend to your questions after presentation. Today, we have Mr. David here, and he's going to share with us on the title about Climbing the Wall of Worry to New High Oil and Abyss. So without further delay, I would like to kickstart our webinar tonight by welcoming our speaker, Mr. David. David, over to you. Thank you, Nicholas, uh, and thank you for the nice introduction. There was certainly a very nice music uh, there uh, with the uh, one-minute uh, advertisement from uh, Kananga Futures. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank Kananga Futures for hosting this event, and especially, of course, to CME Group uh, for sponsoring this evening's program. A big thank you goes to both Kananga Futures and CME Group. Uh, but most of all, thank you all of you for taking your precious time out for, uh, to join this webinar. Okay, tonight we have a very interesting uh, topic. We will, of course, be talking about the U.S. equity markets. And the theme for tonight is climbing the wall of worry to new heights or an abyss. So climbing the wall of worry is, uh, it seems, is a 1950s expression. And uh, it describes a market that keeps going up despite all the uncertainties, right? All the negative factors, but markets still continue to go up, right? Uh, it's somewhat like... Uh, People are like fearing or of missing out or that term FOMO, fear of missing out. So everybody's like rushing and getting into the market. I think uh, you saw that in the US markets. We also saw that in the Malaysian equity markets. Now, the big question is this, uh, how long is this going to last, right? Uh, or some has uh, even asked the question, has it already ended, right? And uh, tonight we will attempt to shed some light on this and uh, hopefully provide you a roadmap uh, to navigate the markets in this uh, very volatile, uh, very, very volatile times. And uh, as uh, Nicholas has said, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to put it in the chat box and we will attend to those uh, questions at the end of the session. Uh, my session will also include a live uh, chart setup uh, after the uh, static charts and the presentation. We will go into the live market. Uh, of course, uh, the US markets, the futures markets are already running. And uh, we'll go and have a look at uh, some of the prices and what are the market doing and uh, uh, talk about some of the shorter term uh, directions for the market. So that's what we are going to do. So first and foremost, we go down. Click. A short introduction of myself. Uh, basically, uh, I'm the managing partner of Exmodius Trading Group. This is my company. Uh, it does. Uh, it's a consultancy firm specializing in uh, customized trading strategies and coaching for private and corporate clients. Uh, I specialize in equity and commodity derivative markets. Uh, started this company after retiring from the corporate world, uh, which I spent 24 years in the futures uh, industry, in the futures broking industry. So. Uh, come out uh, now I'm a trader. Uh, I actually also spend a lot of time uh, in my, and my main work is in the design of uh, algo trading strategies using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, besides that, I'm very, of, of course, very passionate about trader education. I think that's very important uh, uh, for our traders, uh, our retail clients uh, as well uh, in the market. And this is a uh, sort of my uh, give back to the industry for after so many years in it. So that's a quick introduction uh, to myself and my work. 
Um, this is a disclaimer. Nicholas uh, has spoken some of those, those disclaimers uh, just now, uh, but uh, bear in mind this presentation is provided for education and general information. It does not uh, constitute a recommendation or an offer or solicitation for any purchase or selling of the investment products mentioned here. Uh, if you need any uh, 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 or you want to make any decisions on buying and selling any of the contracts uh, we speak about in this uh, webinar, please seek the advice from your qualified brokers, uh, people from Kananga Futures, and they are be very most happy to answer questions and uh, also uh, guide you on the way. So that's uh, for the disclaimer. This is what we're going to cover. Okay, the webinar session agenda, we will look at the overview and the technical outlook of the current U.S. equity indices. What are the key factors to watch out in the equity index prices? We will look into the current phase of the market momentum and market psychology. Uh, we will uh, use, uh, or I will use uh, Elliott Wave uh, uh, analysis uh, to see which phase of the market are, are the U.S. equity markets currently in. Uh, is it on the uptrend? Uh, which phase of the uptrend, or is it uh, in a downtrend, or has it started a, a, a bear market? So we're going to look at the various phase, uh, the phases of those markets for the Dow, uh, for Nasdaq, and also for the S&P. And then we'll look at potential uh, price direction scenarios. Right after this, we will look at what are the opportunities available available with CME US equity index futures contracts. Right, so you know where the markets are going, you have a, a sense of the direction. How do we mine the opportunities? So we're going to jump into some of those products that are available uh, in CME. What are the tools that you can use, uh, whether to hatch or whether to take a position in a market, uh, whichever is your uh, perspective, uh, whether you are bull or bear, okay, it all depends on the time time frame that you trade as well, and uh, looking at the various opportunities in the horizon. So that will be a snapshot of what we will be covering this evening. Let's move on. Okay, so let's have a quick recap of the Dow Jones Index this year, the three quarters. I think everybody who has been observing or has been trading or investing in the market will be quite familiar uh, on of the situation that we had, uh, the COVID-19, the global lockdown that uh, has um, basically tanked uh, stocks uh, around the world. And uh, in terms of uh, looking at the Dow Jones Index, we actually started 2020 on a very, very interesting and everybody was quite excited at 2020. Right, and uh, nobody actually expected the COVID-19 situation to play out that drastically. Right, the Dow was uh, approaching uh, the 30,000 levels, so everybody was celebrating that a, a new, uh, what you call that landmark uh, uh, level of price for Dow was uh, going to be set. Uh, but short of uh, hitting that 30k mark uh, on the eve of uh, uh, the eve of uh, Valentine's Day, uh, that started the big descent downwards. Uh, uh, from 29,543, uh, the high on 13th of February this year, uh, quickly down to a low on the 23rd of March of 18,086 on the Dow Jones uh, uh, futures. So there was a huge, huge drop. Drop okay, and from then uh, the the uh, the central banks and the uh, Federal Reserve are very quick to come in uh, with the rescue. Uh, packages, uh, unprecedented stimulus response from all the global bank, the, the central banks globally, and that sparked a, a rally, you know, uh, from that bottom in 18,086 up to a high of 29,180, almost going, almost touching the 30k and and the pre-COVID uh, high, right? So that was a high set, uh, uh, 29,180 uh, in on the 3rd of September. Now that was just a couple of weeks back, and 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 now the Dow is you know has, has somewhat corrected quite a lot. So it begs the question: of What is happening? You know, people are asking: Is this a level that uh, we can get back in into the market, or or is this the start of another uh, another uh, downward move? So those those are the questions that the uh, investors, are, traders are. Uh, thinking and 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 uh, uh, debating, right? So let's look at the certain of these uh, factors that are currently being played. Okay. Now the thing is this: um, uh, the talk about the big disconnect between Wall Street and the U.S. economy, right? So the question of whether this is sustainable, okay? Because if you look at the Wall Street and it's gone up so high, 
what is happening to Main Street? What's happening in the U.S. economy? You know, uh, are the consumers uh, uh, spending, okay, or holding back? Are businesses doing better? You know, a lot of small businesses uh, are having a tremendous difficulty. Of course, there are certain sectors of businesses like healthcare, technology, uh, which has uh, seemed to be uh, thriving in, in this uh, COVID uh, era. Uh, but a lot of businesses are, are, are suffering, all right? So there is a huge uh, uh, disconnect, you know? There are so many uh, uh, jobs uh, uh, lost during this period and, and whether uh, the US economy can uh, quickly recover from that, okay? As contrasted to the, the rise from 18,000 to 29,000, this seemed to be the big, big disconnect. So is this sustainable? Can the US equity market continue to go up with this, uh, what they call that uh, uh, negative factors or this, this uh, nagging problem still bugging the economy? Right, so this is a big question. Okay, the other thing that is 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 uh, is a big factor is the uh, the the COVID nineteen situation haven't really played out yet. So is there a new wave of uh, of lockdowns going to come? You know, and that's that's going to be very very negative uh, for uh, the the global markets in 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 general. Right, uh, the UK are considering that in uh, sites of uh, different uh, certain countries in Europe already, they're starting to, to, to consider a second lockdown because the infections are coming back again. Okay, so what is the response to this second wave, right, of, of uh, COVID-19 worries? Okay, the other thing is uh, a lot of economic uh, uh, activities have been restarted. Okay, the question is how sustainable are, is this, okay? Uh, uh, will they, the economic engine stutter and die, right? And in terms of the uh, response from the Federal Reserve, uh, the central banks globally, uh, what other tools have they got in the arsenal? Uh, do, you, they, do they still have enough of this money to stimulate the, the, the next, uh, what do you call that, the, the, in, in case the market uh, is going to fall? Is, is there enough uh, response uh, in, in case that happens again? So all these questions, are really uh, up in the air, okay? So what we're gonna see in the next couple of slides is we're going, we are gonna go into the technicals and see how the market psychology of these players, uh, the traders and incentives are reflecting in the market. So let's move on. So we are now looking at a monthly chart, right? In terms of the Dow Jones, okay, what this says, and, and uh, this is the L wave notation here, if you see, uh, the, the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. These are basically the notation of the Elliott wave. And uh, what uh, just to give a quick one for those who are not familiar with the Elliott wave. Basically, it says that in an, any up wave, uh, this Elliott uh, 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 theory is basically saying that there will be five waves, and there will be in a, in a bull wave there will be uh, five waves. The waves one, waves three, and waves fives are the up waves and then you have uh, two uh, consolidation or, or uh, uh, corrective waves two and four right so in in looking at this picture now right we are currently in wave four in the monthly chart so bear in mind that the monthly chart is is a is a very long term chart right you can see the chart here it uh, runs uh, from uh, current to 2005 it, it runs further back i'm just showing you the five waves uh, up to 2005 so the third wave okay uh, which is the high set uh, this year uh, in the beginning of this year is uh, at this current count the third wave and this is the most aggressive wave we can see here from the two to three, this third wave uh, was from 2009, the recovery of the subprime uh, crisis from 2009, 2000, uh, uh, I mean 2008 to 2009, that where the market uh, recovered. And there's this huge uh, uh, rally. And this is defined as the third wave on this monthly chart. And the third wave is the most aggressive wave. And you saw this very long 11 year uh, bull rally, right? And then you have this, quick uh, downwards move which was the COVID-19 move and it's brought the momentum down to negative and this denotes that uh, the third wave uh, has uh, been completed and now we in we are in fourth wave okay and what is the fourth wave the fourth wave is what we call a consolidation wave 
Okay, so uh, markets will stay in consolidation, although the range can be very large and there's very tradable range over here. We are talking about 18,000 to, to uh, 29,000. We're talking about this is uh, 10,000 uh, in terms of uh, Dow, 10,000 points of trading range. It's still a very huge uh, trading range. Uh, but what uh, what is uh, uh, can be seen from here is this. There is still a fifth wave to be played out. Okay, because in any uh, uh, elite uh, up wave, there are five waves up, right? Which means that the fifth wave has still yet to come. So in the long term, there will be new highs on the Dow Jones, which is the fifth wave, and this uh, fifth wave will exceed the third wave high. Okay, so what that's we we are talking about the longer term. So what is currently happening in the fourth wave is I've put in a, a pink box over here. And this is the target zone, okay? Uh, so when when uh, the third wave is completed and if it goes into the fourth wave, which uh, basically momentum is denoting that it's going into a consolidative wave, then the target zone for the fourth wave is uh, 15,280 to 20,660. So this is the box uh, where uh, if uh, it follows the LA wave count properly, it will drop back into this zone, right? And uh, you can see here, uh, if you note here, uh, the the March 2020 lows, which is at the 18,089 levels, and this target zone can go down to 15,280. So the the revisit of March 20 uh, lows, uh, which happened this year, is uh, currently based on this uh, uh, con consolidation target zone. It's not totally discounted yet. Okay, so that is the downside risk. Uh, a possibility of a downside risk if uh, the full fourth wave consolidation plays out. Okay, so, so this is something you need to keep in mind. Uh, this is on the longer term. If the Dow will come uh, uh, into the fifth wave uh, rally and then uh, also exceed the high of uh, 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 the third wave. Right. So this is the view from the monthly chart. Let's move on to the. This is uh, okay. Wait, overshot. Okay. This is the weekly chart so what does the weekly chart show okay in terms of the weekly chart research uh, is showing that it's in the corrective mode okay and wave five actually uh, uh, ended uh, on the weekly chart uh, from the high of this year and is now in the abc con correction mode okay and in the abc correction mode in elite wave there is this three wave down okay and uh, we currently have completed uh, the first wave a uh, finish the wave uh, wave V potentially uh, the top there 29180 is the V top okay and then we are now on this C corrective uh, uh, wave down on which is what we call the C wave now the correct the the uh, this this uh, what we call that uh, corrective C wave down uh, one characteristic of it is it can be quite aggressive Right. So if it plays out into the ABC correction, this particular wave down can be quite aggressive. Okay. And uh, it is expected that this uh, uh, ABC corrective wave down would actually uh, coincide with the Monday wave walk, wave four low, which we saw, which I mean, which we saw just now, the pink box. Right. So uh, that could possibly coincide with the monthly wave four low. So in terms of uh, looking at the weekly chart, it's still in consolidative uh, mode. So there's a possibility of this fast uh, 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 down wave down. So this is something that you need to uh, uh, bear in mind. Okay. So we move now to the daily chart. Okay. And what does the daily chart show? Okay. So this uh, daily chart five wave up was the, from the recovery from the March lows. You can, uh, there's this five wave. Okay. One, two, three, four, five wave. It's completed the five wave at 29180 and it's also in the corrective mode. Okay. So you can see in the monthly, weekly and the daily charts is in corrective mode. All right. So, um, so the markets will either go sideways or, the, or, or down. Right, most likely in uh, from what the Elliott wave suggests, uh, it's down currently. Right, so this five wave rally has been completed, and again uh, uh, at this current juncture in the daily charts, it's looking like the possibility of uh, uh, of doing the B correction. So you may see the Dow Jones uh, in the next uh, uh, 
three to four weeks, uh, do uh, a, uh, a correction upwards from the fall that it did the correction down to A, and there is a possibility of recover, recovery to B, and then only doing that C move down. Okay, so that's the picture for the Dow. Uh, so uh, expect volatility to perceive, okay, as the corrective wave will spell more uh, potential downside. Okay, now the thing about this volatility, uh, uh, all this movement and all this uncertainty which creates the volatility will also create uh, something which is very interesting, especially for futures traders. It creates a lot of opportunity. Okay, of course, you need to know how to take advantage, and we will talk about it. Uh, how to use CME products to take advantage of these opportunities that present itself, whether it's a bear market or a bull market. We move on. So let's look at the S&P. Okay, the S&P 500 is likely to mirror the Dow action, except uh, because the S&P has a lot of these FANG stocks. Okay, uh, you, you, uh, if you're familiar with FANG stocks, these are the big tech stocks, uh, which are components of the S&P. These are the Facebooks, the Amazons, the Apples, the Netflix, uh, of course, the Google, uh, now called Alphabet, and uh, even the, the, the uh, Microsoft. And all these are the big, stacks, uh, big tech stocks that have been holding the S&P up. Okay, so the question is, can FANG stocks continue to keep S&P out of the correction mode? Okay, and as can, as can see here, this is uh, a monthly chart as well. So uh, monthly chart in terms of the wave count is on the third wave. Okay, so this is a very aggressive wave. Okay, it's on the third wave as well. And there's a potential for a fourth wave down and then a fifth wave up. So very similar to the Dow, the S&P, uh, uh, we'll see new historical highs after a consolidation uh, of this uh, third wave. Right, so um, we will have to see, okay, uh, how this uh, fourth wave uh, plays out. But let's look at uh, the weekly chart. Okay, this is a weekly chart. And uh, in terms of the weekly chart, uh, it's in uh, what we call a irregular correction uh, mode. Okay, you can see it's a very, the, the, after the fifth wave it's done, it's uh, completed the five wave upwards. Now it's in the ABC correction mode. <clears throat> Excuse me for that. So now it's in ABC correction mode. And in this mode, uh, it's uh, uh, very similar to the Dow. There are potential multiple whipsaw in this phase, right? And see over here, uh, it's uh, likely to have completed the B top as well and now moving to a weekly C uh, wave downwards. Okay. And the target zone for the corrective wave could see it move down to the uh, 2316 levels for the for the uh, S&P 500, okay? And uh, again, uh, there's no uh, discounting yet of the possibility to retest the 2020 A, uh, a wave flow. This is the low uh, of March, which is the 2174, okay? So the possibility still remains there, okay, for the S&P. We move on to the NASDAQ. Okay, this is very interesting. NASDAQ, of course, everybody knows uh, the tech stock has been rallying and uh, it's been making new historic highs. And currently, in terms of the wave count, it's still holding at the top of its momentum, right? Uh, it's uh, relatively unscathed, but the question is, will it go into a, the consolidation zone, which you will see, right? So in terms of the long-term monthly chart, uh, NASDAQ still they're holding a very, very long, uh, what do you call that, uh, very strong uh, position now. Uh, the 10,800 levels is very, very uh, uh, important. It has tested that during its uh, drop downwards, okay? It needs to hold above this 10,800 to avert a corrective move. So if it trades below that and continues to go down that, it would have probably confirmed uh, the that it's going into the corrective mode as well. But as it is in terms of the monthly chart, the momentum is still very strong. As you can see, the last couple of days, the market, uh, uh, when it uh, rallied up, the tech stocks have made a very, very strong uh, move upwards, right? So that's the, that's the characteristic of the NASDAQ stocks. We move on and have a look at the daily chart, okay? So in terms of the shorter term daily chart, uh, the momentum has actually gone down below the zero line. No? This is the momentum indicator over here, and it's moved down below. And in terms of looking at uh, basically the daily charts, what it says is the third wave for the uh, NASDAQ 
daily chart has been completed and now is in the fourth wave correction mode. Right. So in terms of the uh, shorter term charts, which is the daily chart for the NASDAQ, it is basically saying that uh, uh, the wave four consolidation zone with a possibility of looking at prices at the 8,876 to the 10,255 levels. Okay. So this is the potential downside on the daily charts currently for the NASDAQ. So in terms of looking at the weekly and monthly, is there's a there's a high possibility that uh, it will move to, into consolidative uh, consolidative uh, uh, momentum, right? So you can see over here, this 10,800 levels was tested and it managed to bounce off. Okay. Let's see whether this uh, 10,800 levels are uh, very critical levels is able to hold. All right. Okay. So that is uh, uh, the look of the uh, view of the elite wave for the uh, Dow Jones, for the S&P and NASDAQ. Later, we'll look into uh, the live charts to see any changes in, in the situation. And we probably also go into the hourly charts to see at the, uh, for the trend for next couple of days. Okay. So now that you know the trend uh, for all the three indices, let's see how to uh, mine the opportunities available with the US index futures, uh, CME suite of products. Okay, um, let me show you the currently the S&P 500 index futures, right? This is one of the main uh, contracts uh, uh, in the CME group, especially the EMI S&P 500. But here we have two contracts. We have the micro E-mini S&P 500 and the classic E-mini S&P 500. Okay, uh, the E-mini S&P 500, of course, is a big brother. Uh, micro is a smaller one, as you can see. Uh, uh, the contract size for the E-mini S&P 500 is $50, uh, $50 times the S&P index, whereas the micro E-mini S&P 500 is uh, $5. So uh, one-tenth of the size of the E-mini, right? And in terms of trading the, e the index futures of, uh, of, later we'll show some examples, of course, of trading uh, these contracts is quite simple in terms of trading uh, the index. Basically, what this means is, let's say, for example, you buy a contract in uh, micro E-mini S&P. Okay, you feel that, okay, now it's, uh, it's hit a, a uh, support levels. It's going for a short-term rally upwards, uh, corrective mode upwards, right? So you're bullish on that uh, for the next, uh, say, one week. So you buy the S&P 500 index. And if the S&P 500 index were to go up by, say, by 200 points, right? And you bought the micro E-mini. So 200 points times $5, okay? Uh, you made how much? You made basically 1,000 US dollars. So it's it's quite simple. Uh, every single one point for the micro e minis is $5 US and for the uh, e-mini S&P 500 is 50. Okay, so that's how you calculate the uh, trading and index. Now, um, what is what do you need? What's the minimum requirement to trade one contract of this S&P index futures? Now we can see here the margins. Okay, and these are the minimum margins uh, required by CME clearing. Okay, um, uh, Kananga futures may have uh, different margins or it could be the same, okay. Uh, normally, sometimes broker may have a, a slightly different. You go back, please uh, uh, consult uh, Kananga futures for your margins on these uh, respective contracts. But in terms of the CME minimum margins, you need to have US 12,000 uh, for the E-mini S&P 500, okay. And uh, uh, at one time when uh, uh, everyone was trading the E-mini S&P 500 the Classic. The US 12,000 US dollars is quite a big contract, right? So uh, the exchange came up with this new contract, the micro E-minis, which is only one tenth. So you see, uh, in US dollar terms, 1,200 is relatively uh, even affordable uh, in terms of, let's say, if we uh, compare to those who are trading a Malaysian index, uh, it's uh, for the US contract, this is something like uh, about 5,000 Malaysian ringgit. So it's relatively quite comparable in terms of the micro e minis and the, the Malaysian contracts you're trading as well. So have a look at that as, as a possibility. This is because the volatility and the movement of the, the uh, S&Ps are uh, um, uh, fantastic as well, right? So this is the, the S&P 500 index futures. Let's look at the Dow Jones index futures, which is quite popular in the uh, Asian uh, region, uh, including Malaysia. Uh, we are quite uh, we are quite used to the Dow Jones Index and there is, of course, this Dow Jones Index futures for you to trade. There's the E-mini, which is the $5 Dow, the very famous $5 Dow. And we have the micro E-mini Dow, which is the 50 cents uh, Dow. Uh, basically, what it means is uh, 50 cents times each of the Dow Jones Index. So if you bought or sold a Dow Jones Index, say you made 100 uh, index points on the Dow Jones Index, you just need to multiply by the uh, 
50 cents or by the five dollars depending on which contract you trade okay i will later go into talking about the features of the micro e mini uh, suite of uh, indexes uh, shortly but let's look at the individual contracts currently now look at the margin requirements right to trade one micro e mini dow index futures you only require usd 950 us dollars so it's quite a, a, a affordable contract to trade and that basically underlies the big success of the micro e minis because it brought a, a whole new uh, a, a uh, uh, host of different different type of people uh, now available to trade this particular contract and we'll see later how much the volume has actually picked up because of that right so this is the uh, e-mini for the Dow Jones uh, e-mini and the micro e-minis we move down to the Nasdaq 100 okay this is tremendous tremendous uh, uh, following as well uh, of course you know why is a tremendous rise in in it in the tech stocks and the e-mini nasdaq uh, the classic is a uh, is a 20 times the index nasdaq 100 uh, nasdaq points and the micro e-mini is 110 which is uh, uh, two dollar uh, times the nasdaq index right very similar in calculation as well just 20 uh, for the the big one and the two dollars for the micros right in terms of the uh, margin requirements as well um, for the e-mini is 16,000 and for the micro e-mini is only 1,600 US dollars right now all these three contracts basically trades almost around the clock that's just a one hour break for settlement uh, in our uh, Asian hours very early in our Asian hours okay so um, there are options available as well later we'll talk about some of those options which have just been recently launched there's also the Russell 2000 index futures, although it doesn't seem to have uh, a lot of following over uh, this part of the world, but still a very interesting index. Uh, uh, just to, just that you should be aware, uh, we there's an E-mini Russell 2000, which is a $50 Russell, and then uh, index uh, per index point, and then there's a $5 Russell, which is the micro E-mini, $5 times the Russell 2000 index, right? Margins are actually even lower than the uh, the Dow Jones, 580 uh, for the micro E-mini Russell and 5008 for the E-mini uh, Russell 2000, sorry, the 580 for the micro, right? So um, very similar in terms of the trading hours as the rest of the uh, index futures as well. Uh, let's go in and have a, a quick look at the uh, why you should be looking at trading the micro e-mini futures right uh, of course this is uh, your ability to uh, uh, participate okay in uh, one of the most liquid index futures in the world at a very affordable size only one tenth okay of the e-mini uh, the, all the classic uh, e-minis that used to be uh, quite uh, unreachable because the margins were quite uh, expensive to trade those contracts right so you will have a greater uh, versatility in your trading strategies and uh, for those who may be owing uh, owning some of these uh, shares as well if you're owning uh, you know some of those uh, tech shares uh, microsoft's and 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 the apples and amazon the, a lot of people have those shares as well in malaysia um think also the possibility uh, if you think the markets are going to go on a long consolidation perhaps you can use it to hatch as well you can use the the micro e mini futures uh, especially the nasdaq uh, 100 uh, index futures to hatch your position right to to protect your portfolio right uh, this way you can go short as easily as you go long that means you can trade a bear market uh, there's no short selling restrictions in terms of the index so you if you view that there's this long huge downside risk you can actually trade the downside uh, uh, potential and make money from a down market Right. So that's, uh, of course, uh, broadly very different from uh, the equity markets. Uh, basically, equity markets is a one-way market. So you only make market if uh, equity prices are on the rise. In terms of uh, the uh, index uh, futures, of course, you can trade the downside. You can go short. Okay. So it offers you a lot more opportunities and uh, 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 versatility. Uh, it's also got a very interesting uh, a feature which is a 10 to 1 offset so if you build up a sizable position or you trade more than 10 contracts of the um, the micros you can actually offset it with the e-mini uh, future say for example if you have 10 lots of uh, uh, micro uh, e-minis you can offset it with one contract of the the e-mini future so it allows you more flexibility if you want to uh, to uh, offset your positions right of course in futures uh, the main feature is uh, leverage 
uh, you can basically uh, control a large contract value with a small amount of capital. Uh, in the sense, uh, just now you're looking at the Dow Jones, the margins was 950. So if you look at the Dow Jones now, the Dow Jones, uh, the micros, uh, uh, remember what is the multiplier? The multiplier is uh, 50 cents. So for example, if you look at the Dow Jones price now, let's uh, say for the Dow Jones, uh, just to make it a bit easier, if the Dow Jones is at say 25,000, know, the index points uh, times the 50 cents, Right, so uh, you have basically the Dow Jones are worth uh, 50 cents times 25,000, which is uh, basically like, a, a, uh, how much is that? That's 12,500 in value, but your the margins that you are using to trade, the 12,500 uh, worth of uh, the index contract is only 950, right? So that gives you a tremendous uh, uh, leverage in terms of your returns. But of course, uh, uh, in trading leverage products, you must remember that uh, it's a it's a, a double-edged sword. So you have to, of course, take care of the downside as well, uh, just in case you're wrong, okay? So um, uh, these are the main, uh, three main points of why you should be looking at trading the micro e-mini futures. Okay, so this is uh, a tabulation of all, all four of them in one chart. Okay, you'll be given a handout later. Uh, Kananga Futures will send you, uh, for those attendees, a, a copy of this so you can refer back to this for the contract specs. So basically, it just shows you the uh, all these contracts in one page. Now, let's look at an example of, uh, uh, before that, uh, just have a look at the tremendous volume. Okay, this is uh, the e mini, uh, the micro e mini contracts. 300, more than 394 million contracts have been traded in these four uh, micro contracts since the launch. This is incredible, okay? Launch uh, last year, June, and a tremendous amount of activity. And you can uh, see over here uh, in uh, this recently on September the 8th, okay? And interestingly, September the 8th was uh, where uh, uh, it started to come down. Yeah? The, the indexes started to come down. Uh, the, the uh, had a single day record volume of 4.2 million. Okay, in, it's amazing, and uh, the volumes have just totally skyrocketed uh, amid the global COVID-19. You see here, this is March. Uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, yeah, this is March uh, 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 this year, and uh, there's this huge spike of volumes. Okay, uh, especially on the e-mini S and P's, uh, the micro e-mini Nasdaq, a huge spike of activities. Okay, so this is a very, very active contract. So in terms of uh, the trading volume, you can see over here as well, this historically since uh, uh, when it started, okay, uh, it's a it's fantastic, fantastic volume. Right? This is a bar chart, okay. Okay, and uh, even in during the Asian hours, this is a chart of the extended trading hours. That means outside the non, Outside the U.S. trading hours, uh, six to uh, six a.m. to nine p.m. Uh, our time, okay, Singapore, Hong Kong time, and Malaysia time, uh, huge participation. Over thirty percent of the, uh, the the micro uh, Dow and the micro e mini Nasdaq is traded during these hours. So there's a lot of uh, uh, Asian time uh, trading on these uh, indexes as well. So it's very very active, even even in those uh, non-U.S. trading hours. Okay, so this is fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to do two uh, examples on how you calculate and how you trade uh, uh, the uh, index futures. So we'll give you a bullish market uh, uh, scenario over here. Okay, so in this bullish scenario, let's say for example, you're looking at a, bi a big rebound on say the NASDAQ. So you, you want to buy the NASDAQ. Okay, so you go into the micro e-mini NASDAQ contract. Uh, the, this uh, contract uh, code is MNQ. And suppose you buy a December contract uh, micro e mini MNQ, uh, say currently trading at 11,200. Okay, so if you're bullish, you will go in and uh, long one futures contract. Okay, this is a term for going, uh, if you have a view of the market going up, you will go long, long futures contract. Uh, say you buy one contract of December micro e mini NASDAQ MNQ at 11,200. So there are Two possibilities or two scenarios uh, of, of markets. Of course, every time you go into a contract, either market moves up or moves down. So in this scenario one, 
if December MNQ futures rises to 11,300, okay? So here you bought at 11,200 and now at 11,300, you have a 100 uh, index point gain in your uh, MNQ contract, right? So uh, every single uh, micro e-mini NASDAQ, every single point is $2. So if you're 100 index points up for you, to just multiply that two dollars with your hundred points, you get a two hundred US dollar gain. Okay, very simple. That's how you calculate your PNL. Now, if market drops, okay. Um, so if say um, the MNQ decides to test the ten thousand eight hundred levels, comes down to eleven hundred one uh, one triple one zero zero, then you have a one hundred point loss on an MNQ, which is uh, two dollars US. Multiplied by the 100 points, which give you a $200 uh, dollar in value loss. So it's quite simple in terms of trading the indexes. You just need to see how many points per contract, uh, uh, and then you multiply by the the, uh, the dollar multiplier. Okay, I hope that uh, is clear. If not, you can ask questions later. Okay, we go to a bearish market situation. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, a bearish scenario, perhaps you feel that okay. The micro e mini S and P doesn't really look that good. I think there's a huge opportunity to go short. So what you do is you go and sell or go short a futures position by selling, say, one contract of December micro e mini the MES futures at say 3,400. Okay, and as as it goes, there'll be two scenarios. One is the market drops, or the one is the market goes up. If it goes and uh, for you, and in scenario one, December uh, micro S and P drops to three three zero zero. You have a one hundred point gain as well. Now each of the one hundred point gain in the micro uh, S and P is five dollars multiplied by the index point. So you get five US dollars times your hundred. You make a gain of five hundred in value gain. Okay, and of course, um, okay. Sorry, this is a typo here. Okay, is it? Oh, sorry. This is scenario two. Uh, December micro e mini S and P futures rise to three five oh. So instead of going down, the markets went up. So in this sense, it went against you. So it went to three thousand five. You uh, what did you um, buy that? You you sold at three four. So there's a difference of uh, one hundred US uh, one hundred points times the five dollar per point. You have a loss of five hundred in value. So it's very simple. Okay, just multiply the number of points. Uh, multiplied by the per index point uh, dollar value, then you get your PNLs. Okay. If you have any questions related to this, you could uh, you could ask either in the Q and A or even uh, you can go and ask uh, your Kananga uh, futures broker. Right. It's very simple to calculate. So now, um, okay, just to let you know that uh, there's some new products just came in in August thirty uh, first this year. Uh, CME launched the micro e-mini options on two contracts, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 uh, micro contacts. Okay, this uh, was just launched uh, on Madeka Day for Malaysia. The, um, and uh, this is similar, uh, one-tenth the size of the classic e-mini options. Okay, uh, uh, the underlying, of course, is the micro e-mini S&P 500 and the micro e-mini NASDAQ 100 futures. Okay, that's the underlying for the options on the micro ES and micro NQ. And uh, this is a contract spec. If you are you all are interested, uh, uh, currently it may not be on your platform yet, uh, but hopefully soon, uh, Kananga Futures can offer this contract to you for you to be able to trade. Of course, by using this contract, there's a lot more things you can do uh, with options, a lot of different different strategies that you can use in combination with futures as well. So this is a very interesting contract. This hot of the press uh, has been trading for like. Uh, is uh, uh, less than a month, okay, almost coming to a month, and uh, I think that the that we are looking at the, the the volumes already picking up on these contracts, right? So these are uh, uh, short uh, features and benefits of the options on the micros. Of course, the smaller size, okay, so you can uh, very similar like, like the futures, uh, you you uh, be able to do a smaller size, more affordable, okay, more flexibility in terms of uh, building market neutral, directional or multi leg strategies with your uh, with options, various combinations of options and futures, uh, more efficient use of capital. Of course, options are also leveraged, so uh, it's very similar to futures. Uh, it basically requires less uh, capital to trade. 
the same optional size. And uh, the good thing, of course, uh, the options, uh, one of the things about options, it needs to exercise into a very liquid contract. And already the micro e mini uh, NASDAQ and the micro e mini uh, uh, S&Ps are the very, very liquid uh, underlying futures. Right. So these are the fantastic uh, features and benefits of the options. Hopefully it will be offered uh, by uh, uh, Kananga Futures soon. Right. So we move on to live setup. OK, give me some time. I will switch on uh, to the um, to the live chat. Just give me a moment. Let's see what is the US market doing now. This is the E-mini Dow Jones. We are live. OK, let me expand this. And this is the daily chart. Okay, so in the in terms of the daily chart, we are saying that it's uh, completed the fifth wave uh, upwards. This is the 18,000 levels. It's gone the, up to the 2980 levels, and now it's doing the consolidation wave. Okay, now um, it looks like it's done the A wave. There's normally the A wave is a three wave down, so it's done this one, two, three wave down, and now it's on its correction wave up to B. Right, and in terms of this uh, particular uh, correction, uh, um, we could see in the next uh, few weeks still some up move, upward uh, movement possible on the Dow. Once it goes, uh, so when it goes up to B, then it expected to do the ABC correction because this is the fifth wave correction. Okay, so for the time being, let's move on to say for example, let's move on to the. Um, the hourly chart, hourly chart, and let's see what we can see from the hourly. Go down a bit lower, okay? So you can see a huge move the last uh, couple of days, okay? On the 25th, there's this whole move upwards. There's this big support and 20, 26,400 levels. This big support, it tested double bottom twice here, over here, and now it's on upward move. Uh, and uh, what's it doing now? Now you see the the momentum over here. This is the momentum, and it's uh, gone from red. Uh, it's possibility of looking uh, at a a uh, going below zero. It's still above zero. Okay. And now uh, what this means is this: if we look at the elliot wave, okay, basically a uh, quick look at this count. Basically, this is wave one, okay, followed by wave two. And now there's a wave three, which is completed, and it's now it moves down to below zero, then it will have confirmed a wave four. Okay. And what does that mean? You have a wave three, that means you have another higher wave called the wave five. Okay. So possibility of seeing the uh, the Dow Jones uh, the uh, continue to move up higher, probably to this this particular uh, target at 28,000 is a possibility, okay, because there's another uh, wave up on the fifth. Okay, uh, looks like it's going to do a consolidation currently uh, in the next uh, one to two trading session before it moves up and move to uh, this new wave high. Okay, so this is what uh, the picture of the hourly for the Dow Jones is looking. Okay, so let's look at the other charts. Let's look at. Okay, let's look at the S and P daily. Now the charts for the E mini S and P and the micro E minis are almost exactly uh, the same because it, it trades so tight together because it's all related right so the charts are, i'll show you one i don't need to show you the micros because it's almost exactly the same okay so in terms of looking at the 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 daily charts okay so you see it's on a consolidative move it's gone to this uh cell one of these uh, uh structure cell signals was done when it broke this level which is at three two nine three levels and uh it, this is the first uh, cell signal in terms of the structure of the daily chart so now you can see that uh, it's moving down the lower lows and the lower highs so it uh but the possibility of it moving upwards again if i go in into the hourly chart it could be very similar Right, very similar to the Dow Jones, as we say, you will mirror the Dow Jones movement. Uh, big support here at these levels, the 3,200 levels. Okay, almost tested it twice, then gone up here. And again, the very, very similar wave count, five waves here, wave one, wave two, wave three. Okay, consolidation wave four with a possibility of another. There's still some upside in the short term for the S&P uh, 500. It's going to do this up with uh, within that ABC correction. Okay, so very similar in terms of uh, the S&P. So for those uh, who are trading the Dow and or the S&P, uh, you're looking for possibility of some uh, support 
uh, at these levels. Uh, if you want to look at uh, the spot levels, is normally for the uh, fourth wave consolidation, you're looking for a a uh, Fibonacci retracement of about 50%, and at the most uh, 62% uh, from this wave uh, over here. Just okay, quickly for those who are who like Fibonacci. Um, okay, so we're here. So um, this particular walk, uh, wave four consolidation is likely to to be around this particular zone over here. Okay, this particular zone, um, possibly maybe not touching this first wave, uh, but uh, you're talking about uh, a consolidation around the three two five zero to the three three zero zero levels. Okay, so the possibility of that reaching, um, looking for a uh, buying zone for the next wave up, then you should be looking for a a zone around the. 3250 to the 3300 levels for the S&P uh, EMI 500. Okay. So let's move on to NASDAQ and let's see what we have on NASDAQ. NASDAQ is very, very interesting. Okay. So this is the NASDAQ uh, E-mini daily chart. Okay, very strong move off, uh, almost double bottom there, the 10,600 level. So it's now currently holding above the 10,800. So this is very interesting. Uh, let's go to the hourly chart and see what's the uh, shorter term. Um, uh, so very similar as well, you can see, right? This this charts are basically, um, uh, for the US indices, it's, it's a very similar chart as well. Right, so possibility again. This looks like the third wave on this uh, correction mode upwards. Okay, this is the upward, uh, uh, what do you call that rebound, and uh, now possibly moving into fourth wave. And then, if you are looking for a zone to buy the Nasdaq, uh, then it's this particular zone. It's uh, the buying zones for the for the Nasdaq on the possible of a fourth wave bottom will be around the um, the 11,050, 11,000 to 11,130 levels. This is the most highly probable levels that you will target the fourth wave consolidation. Okay, so that is the um, Nasdaq for you. Okay, currently, uh, if you are trading, um, now the position looks like it's going to go in the consolidation wave with four downwards. So that's the that's what the elite wave count is uh, suggesting for Nasdaq. So in terms of the, all the three indices, it looks like at uh, on the hourly charts for the short term, all the three indexes is is going to have to consolidate a bit to the fourth wave and then move to a uh, higher high to the fifth wave, okay? So potentially in the next one week or next couple of days, you can see all these three indexes continue to climb upwards after its fourth wave consolidation, okay? So this is a, a look of uh, all these three uh, indexes for timing. We'll take some questions. Okay, we move back uh, to the slides. Okay, so... Um, we will now take some questions. Okay, I will uh, pass back to our moderator, uh, Nicholas, who has been monitoring the questions that we've been putting up. So, uh, Nicholas, back to you on questions. All right. Um, thanks, David. We have a question here from the participant asking, um, why much sell-off is not considered as with four? Mm, okay, interesting. Uh, which chart are you talking about? Uh, which is it? Dow Jones, Nasdaq, or the S and P? I think when he asked, send the question is on Dow. If not, Mister, it's on Dow. Um, YJ, uh, can you clarify? Okay, in, in, let me move. Nicholas, can you repeat the question again? Why much sell-off is not considered as a wave four? Oh, okay. Then you, that the, that will be uh, talking about the Nasdaq and the S and P's. Okay. So let me let me look at the. Okay, let me contrast between the Dow Jones uh, and the Dow Jones. Okay. Okay. In terms of looking at the Dow Jones, if you can see my screen currently, um, let me move on to the... Okay, um, okay, 
since we're in chats, let's let's go to the chats. Dow Jones. Let's move to monthly. Okay, in terms of counting the Elliott wave, uh, uh, one of the principles that I, I basically use is um, um, the counts uh, normally if the fourth wave, if it's a fourth wave, then the momentum should go below zero. Okay, uh, that's the way I use the the uh, the momentum indicators to look at the fourth wave. Okay, so in terms of looking at the E mini Dow Jones, okay, when it went down to the eighteen thousand levels, okay, and 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 then started to move, it's gone down to below the zero uh, the zero levels. So that uh, that be moving below the zero levels confirms the fourth wave for the Dow Jones. Whereas if we look at the monthly charts for the um, say the Nasdaq, okay, let's look at the Nasdaq. Okay, during the drop, okay, during the drop to the the, the March lows, the momentum's did not go below zero. So the momentum momentum's continue to uh, be strong. Okay, so in terms of looking at the AO as an indicator of the phase of the market in terms of momentum, uh, that's why in terms of the Nasdaq, it's not a uh, wave four. And also uh, in terms of looking at the S&P, let's go to the S&P. Okay, let's go to the monthly chart. Monthly chart. You see, when it came down, it did not go below zero, so I do not count it as a, as the as the fourth wave. Okay, I need the confirmation of going below uh, zero uh, in the momentum's to count that as a fourth wave confirmation. That's why I I am not counting it that way. So I hope that uh, answers your question. As in terms of why the Dow and the Nasdaq and S and P is different in terms of the wave count. I hope that answers your question. All right, uh, we have next question from Samuel asking, how do you use alligator, indicator, and uh, fractal? Ah, okay. Alligator and fractals. Okay, for those who want to find out more on uh, alligator and fractals, these are indicators uh, which have been created by this great uh, trader and educator, who's my mentor as well, um, Bill Williams. Okay, he has written a few books, and one of his most famous books is called Trading Chaos where he introduced this indicator called alligator and the fractals. Okay, now in terms of looking at this particular chart, if you see over here, the fractals are the little uh, arrows here, right? And the fractals define the fractal nature of the market. That means the Elliott wave, each of these waves that you see over here, uh, all these fractals are part of the Elliott wave, right? So in terms of trading a price action, okay, uh, and I I, uh, I don't know whether you've attended any of my uh, talks on how to trade the the structure. Uh, you see all these uh, uh, waves. If you join, okay, let's let me just put it into a line chart for you. Okay, if you look at this line chart, basically it's a. Uh, the whole structure of the wave upwards wave okay the higher high high lows are defined by these fractals okay so we will trade the we will use the uh, fractals uh, breakouts to trade so i will trade the fractal breakouts okay every time it breaks the new high and then if you uh, also identify the reversal signals on the fractals if it makes a lower low and a lower high Okay, so that's how I use basically in a very short answer to how I trade fractals. But in terms of the alligator, okay, uh, alligator is these three lines here. Okay, let me put it into say uh, daily chart so that's a bit more deep. Okay, then I put it into. Okay, so the alligator is these three lines. Okay, and the uh, alligator is very good to define whether the prices are in a in an impulsive mode or is in a uh, in, in a consolidation mode. Now, when prices are inside these three lines, as you can see over here, okay, it's in a, some sort of a corrective mode, okay. And if it's above, okay, if uh, if the prices are above the three lines, it's in an upward mode. And if it's below the three lines, it's in a down wave, okay. So we can use the alligator to basically uh, to filter off. Uh, the areas when you're trading, if it's inside the alligator, you won't want to trade or it's very close or trading within the three lines. You don't want to trade those. Uh, if you're a trend trader, you don't want to be uh, in the market or you wait for the opportunity to break out, say, for example, over here. 
Okay, just to give you an example, it has been trading uh, uh, in say in from June 8th until uh, uh, the early July in a very consolidative. You don't want to be you do you don't want to be holding or, or trading in this uh, position unless you are going into a, a smaller time frame because this is consolidation. And uh, in a sideways market, it's very difficult. You lose money over here. And only on a breakout above the three lines, like over here, uh, you did a breakout on the 6th of July above this line. And that's where you will position yourself on the upward uh, to buy. Okay. So uh, I use alligator for two things. One, to filter out my trades. Number two, to know when uh, the market is in a consolidation or the market is in a trend. So I hope that answers uh, your question. Um, hopefully one day we can have a chance to sit down and uh, share a few ideas on uh, further more detailed ideas on how to trade uh, using the fractal and alligator. Uh, back to you, Nicholas. All right. Um, thanks, David. There's next question from Valeri asking, why is the thinking framework or metrics you use to decide on a bullish or bearish outlook? Thinking metrics. Okay. Um, how do I trade? Okay. So in uh, how do I decide whether okay uh, market is bearish or bullish uh, bearish or bullish? Now the first thing is this: I will look at market structure as I was just now talking um, to uh, answering that question. Um, first is let's look at this example. Okay, uh, take five minutes. Okay, now um, using your eyes and just eyeballing this particular trend okay um, immediately uh, you can basically tell that it's on a down downtrend okay now, this is like a big picture okay it's on a downtrend okay and where was the first uh, and this was s and p i said the first sell signal in terms of the fractal structure came at this level from markets uh, uh, moved down the 3295 or broke below the 3295 okay of course um, you can even go down to the five minute charts okay and you can also see that micro structure here, which are defined by these arrows, which are the fractals. Okay. So in terms of looking, say for example, this particular zone over here. Okay. This particular zone. So when I look at the chart and I say, okay, um, is this particular zone, what zone, what trend is this market trading? Of course, it's in terms of looking at it, it's trading on the lower, low, lower highs and lower, low and lower highs. And that is the law of the market. If the market is on the downtrend, it would have this characteristic of lower, low and lower highs. Okay. So how do you time your entries will depend on what sort of uh, uh, trading indicators you use. You could use things like momentum right over here, which is uh, this particular momentum is called the awesome oscillator, which is also a Bill Williams creation. Okay, this is AO. Okay, let's say if I put it down, you can see it's AO. Okay, you can trade um, basically using the this indicator as well uh, when it turns red and it breaks below. Okay, and that's uh, something that uh, uh, that is uh, that I'll be teaching as well. Um, you can use anyone though, but firstly, most of all, I look at the 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 uh, the 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 structure of the market. Is it going sideways, down, down, high, high, high lows, or lower, lower, lower highs? Okay. So that's how I determine whether the market is bullish or not. Okay. Of course, I can use uh, the alligator. I can see that whether these prices are trading below or above the three lines. If it's below the three lines, I'm bearish. If it's uh, above the three lines, I'm bullish. Okay. So that's a very quick and easy way if you want to know whether the current market is in uh, a bullish phase or a bearish phase. Okay. The first thing is eyeball it. Okay. Because your your eyes can easily see a trend. Okay. And so in terms of this particular this area over here. Okay. This area here is uh, slightly sideways, right? If you can see, there's uh, some defined tops here and uh, some defined bottoms here. Okay. But if you go deeper into it, you can see this is on the down down wave, and this is not, this is now on the up wave. Okay. So you can use the alligator to filter off. Uh, your particular trade to decide. I hope that answers the question. Okay, uh, a bit too short time to handle that particular question, but that's a quick and and uh, fast answer to your question. And hopefully, that gives you some guidelines on how I see it. Okay, we can take one more last question, Nicholas. If you have, it looks, looks like we have covered all the questions uh, for now. Uh, okay. Let's see. All right, we give a few more minutes, uh, maybe for a few more seconds, for the participants to send in question if they have. 
If not, yeah. then we will um, we'll end for today. Yeah. So uh, while the question is coming, hopefully there's one more last question. Um, you can see here. Um, yeah. One. I always get a question of what are the the indicators which I use. So uh, one look at it, you can see I'm using the awesome oscillator. Check it out. Uh, Bill Williams uh, 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 trading chaos. Um, and then the alligator, which is also a Bill Williams uh, indicator, and also the fractal. Okay, uh, a fractal is a, a very interesting um, uh, indicator, which uh, was designed during the times uh, using the I, the IBM uh, mainframes. Okay, of course now uh, using a a uh, computer on a PC, you can already see this uh, wave been drawn out for you. When I first started using this uh, almost 20 years ago, I had to use uh, and draw it by hand. Okay, I then did a fight with my eyes and draw it by hand. But now it's so convenient. Okay, do we have any questions? If not, I will pass the session back to Nicholas. Um, let me see. Yes, uh, we have next question here from Johnny asking, in this current chart, when the alligator tree line becomes narrow, what does it mean? Mm. If the tree lines start to jumble together, like here, that means the market is going into consolidation. Okay, that means it's going to go sideways. Okay, so when the, the mouth is opening wide here, let's see over here, eh? every time the tree lines open up, that means the market is in a trend. Okay, so when it's opening up, of course, you see whether the prices are below or above, right? So in this in this sense, this current uh, phase here, when the, the, all the tree lines are opening, and uh, the more it opens, I mean, the, uh, the alligator in, in Bill Williams' words is hungrier. That means he want to eat more prizes. So it's a very aggressive down move, okay? And when it uh, goes into jumble, that is slipping already, sideways already. So you don't want to be uh, uh, trading in a sideways market. It's very difficult to trade during sideways markets. You buy, it goes down, you sell, it goes up, right? So you want to trade trendy markets. So you trade when uh, the prices are above and uh, the prices are the moving averages of the alligator is opening up. Okay, so that's uh, what it means when when the the so when it's jumbling here, it's sideways. So in terms of looking at the S and P five minutes, it's basically now in a consolidative a consolidation sideways move five minutes. Okay, yeah, it's in consolidation. So it's uh, getting closer and closer together. So you want to see prices move up more aggressively, uh, either above these two areas. Okay, uh, either you you look at this two areas, this trend line, okay, this is where the, the breakout will be over here and uh, over here. Okay, so this uh, basically like a sideways market over here, that's why. So a, a breakout of these two levels will probably see the trend uh, move better. Okay, so um, hopefully uh, I answered uh, Johnny's question there. So that's, that'll be the last question and I'll pass the uh, holding back to Nicholas. Um, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, David, is it okay that we take one more question, one more last question? It's sure, on... no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like the question is about what what's your favorite book when it comes to mastering trading psychology? Trading psychology, my favorite book. Uh. Oh, I got many <laughs> many work, <laughs> the books on trading psychology. Uh, okay, let me see what is the name of that particular guy. Give me a, a moment. I've been reading this uh, book called the. Uh, this give me a second. I'll lock into my iPad. Uh, yeah, if you are reading trading psychology books, uh, very good because that is the last stage of of trading already. Because once you have mastered uh, the trading methodology, uh, once you have mastered uh, the uh, methodology, you will find that uh, your your main challenging uh, main challenges is actually not method or money management. The main uh, challenge will be actually uh, in trading psychology. Let me let me see whether I have it over here. If not, then um, I'll I'll send that uh, thing over to Nicholas uh, when I find it. I I just finished reading. I just totally forgot who the writer is. Just just let me give me a second to see whether I can find it here. Uh, trading psychology. Um, I think uh, it's best that uh, I'll I'll just uh, uh, I'll just get back to Nicholas on that. Sorry about that. I just totally can't remember <laughs> at this current moment, right? So I'll get back to Nicholas on that question. 
and uh, congratulations to have moved up to the last level of trading. When you're trading, you're reading trading psychology, you are already in the last part of it. <laughs> okay, so so sorry about that. Just totally out of my mind at this current moment, but I'll definitely get back to Nicholas on that. Thanks for the okay. question. Okay, thanks. All right, um, all right, before we end the session, is there anything else you would like to add on? Uh, that'd be all. Uh, good luck to everybody. Okay. Um, basically, now you know what is the phases of the uh, US, US equity markets. Uh, the uh, the CME products, uh, especially the micros, are the amazing products to trade. So hopefully, uh, you can get started uh, with Kananga Futures on those uh, US equity index, especially the micros. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us tonight. All right. Um, great, and thank you. Um, should you have any further queries, please feel free to drop us an email at bcrm at kananga.com.my. We appreciate you being here and hope that you enjoyed the webinar uh, tonight. Please take a minute to rate our webinar and your feedback is highly appreciated. And thanks again for joining us and hope to see you again in our next event. Stay safe, everyone, and good night. Good night.